and welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is all about what do you finally do the last four steps before you send your painting out to the museum? You know, things, the simple things, but you ask me all the time. We're going to talk about the varnish, the signature, the sides, the hardware. Now it's ready to go to the museum. Hey, let me show you on this bigger one, and I'll do those four steps, and let's get started. Now, the top and final coat is a varnish, an acrylic varnish. I use all different kinds of varnishes. This one happens to be polyacrylic made by Minwax. I get it at the hardware store. It works. It's got the UV properties in it. It's fine. Now the thing is, it looks a little white, so it looks like it's milk. So don't freak out. It will dry optically clear. The most important thing is that you stir it slowly. And I can't emphasize that enough. Just don't shake it. Oh my gosh, do not shake your can. There we go. Slowly stir it all up. Now it's white, it will dry clear. The brush I use is a, it looks like a sable brush, but it's really not a sable brush. It's soft and it's smooth. It looks like a sable. I wet the bristles a little bit and go in one direction. One direction, see it looks a little milky now. On top of this black. There we go, see how slowly I'm putting this on? I can go back on top of it and get some of those puddles, no problem. But it will dry optically clear if you go slowly. This is not the time to answer the telephone. Trust me, this is when your phone will ring. <laughs> see, I can go back over it slowly. I'm just getting rid of some of the puddles because I have so much texture in this particular painting. Now you have a choice of course of the finishes. This happens to be semi semi gloss. I'm only putting it on the top. I'm only putting it on the top. Notice in one direction slowly. The thing is, if the phone rings, you're gonna start doing this. La-dee-da, la-dee-da, back and forth, and you're gonna get totally lost in your conversation. And what you're doing is you're frothing it up. It froths up, yeah. There you go. I'm just getting rid of some of the puddles. So we'll let that, this is water soluble. It goes right back into the bucket of water. It's shiny now, but it's going to be drying semi-gloss. It was my choice. You have a choice of glossy, semi-gloss, satin, matte, you know, whatever they have on the shelf right now. <laughs> so that's the part. Now, now this will dry in a few hours. And now it's time for the signature. Let's get going. And now, step two. I use a Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pen. They're archival quality, and it's exactly what I need. They come in three different sizes. I use medium. This is on that canvas, all right? So I'm gonna, I look at the bottom. I can sign it anywhere. I'm looking for a place that would be clear and obviously show my name. Okay, this is, has nothing, nothing to do with ego. It's make sure you communicate. So, and it'll be my name. So here we go. That looks pretty clear. I'm putting this down here like this. Something to rest my palm on so I can write a little neater. This is not the time to write something fast, like a doctor's script. Make it legible. That's so important. I can't stress that enough. Okay, so 
and well inside. That's all it requires right there. You know, it's a fancy RB burridge. <laughs> and it's done, it's permanent. It sits beautifully on top of that varnished finish because the varnished finish is nice and smooth. And now the side, this is when I address the sides and I paint a little bit of a gray color. I mix it all up, here we go. Step three, the color of the side of the canvas is I usually make something like a, a charcoal gray. I don't use black, I thought it was just too, too much. And I don't try and keep it white. So I mixed black gesso and white gesso in one can and I mix up a somewhat of a neutral gray like that. Looks like navy gray. All right, so that way the colors of the painting really stand out. All right. So that's my gray. The brush I use is a pretty wide brush. That way I don't have to keep touching the canvas all the time. So it's pretty wide. This canvas is inch and a quarter and I think that's pretty much what this brush is. Wet the brush, I always wet the brush. And I put a lot on the table. A lot of paint on the table. That way it's nice and juicy. I put a lot on. You know, it is the same width. That's nice, convenient. Now look how I'm doing this. I'm going up. I'm no, I don't have to worry about a straight line. I, if I go from bottom to up, slowly. Let's see if I can do this slowly so you all can see this. You see, and it creates its own beautiful line. And I can come back here and loosely paint the back edge. So the front edge is perfectly clean right now. You see? I didn't have to put tape down or worry about shaking hands as long as you go from bottom up. Long strokes. I put a lot on, by the way. That way I don't have to keep touching the canvas, tickling the canvas, I call it. There we go, done. And so the whole side is real clean. And because it's been varnished, because it's been varnished, if you may have overpainted and you got some of the gray paint on the side, on top of the varnish, well, that's just a matter of just taking paper towel and wiping away from it. Wiping away from it, just like that. See, it didn't take off very much. And you do that to all four sides. Okay, now we have the top done, the varnish perfect, we have the sides will be done. And now the hardware, oh, we did that signature also. And notice it's just your name, not all your letters and graduation numbers and things like that. Just your name. All right, now let's go on the back side and do the hardware. Now step number four. This is where, where we put the hardware on. Now there's D rings, there's all kinds of framer rings you can use. I don't use those things. I just use these simple little self-tapping wood screws, and they have a wide shoulder. It's like they have the, the washer already on it. So that's all I need. And I also have the soft strand. Soft strand is the proper framer's wire. Okay, this one holds like up to 25 pounds. You can get them heavier too. But this is soft strand, it's really easy to use. All right, And you're gonna wanna have one of these. Get a good one. Got a wire cutter for the soft strand. And you're gonna get a one of these, okay? They're pretty convenient. 
Now, believe it or not, you measure down 10 inches on this particular canvas because it's 30 inches. You're actually measuring down one third down. So this is 10 inches. The whole thing's 30 inches, right? Third down, there it is. I have it on the other side too. 10 inches down. That's where you're going to be putting your hardware. And the reason you do that, because it will hang at the right angle when it's hanging in the gallery of the... There you go. So I just screw it down just a little bit. Just a little bit. So I can get the wire underneath it. Okay. Now here comes the wire part. This is so simple to do. Or you can have your favorite. I wrap it around several times. Several times like that. Like this. Slowly. Done. Done. Look how simple that is. Now you can, if you want, trim that off with this beautiful little wire cutter. Some people like to do a neat job. There you go. Be careful of that end. It's pretty, it's pretty sharp. Now, how loose do you make this? It's usually two inches from the top. Usually two inches from the top. And I just visually measure it like that. And I go up to the other side and put the screw in and wrap it around. Just make sure it's about two inches from the top. That way it will hang at the right angle and won't reflect the, the ceiling lights in the gallery. Someone's figured this out for us. Hey, I hope you enjoyed finishing your painting. Now get them out there. People are coming out of their homes and they wanna see your work. And I wanna see your work. Show them your work. All right, I'll see, I'll see you on the next Bob Blast. Take care.